our last storyteller tonight. She's a really good friend of mine, and <clears throat> she actually is an AC Transit supervisor, and I work, I'm an engineer on the Transbay Transit Center project, so I'm always seeing her, and I'm going, Shania, you, you gotta tell a story, you gotta tell, because I've heard her stories, and they're so good. This woman has more stories than the Library of Congress. In fact, I saw her once keep a middle school class completely engaged with just a box of cupcakes and a handful of stories. Not sure which was the most influential factor. But anyway, please give it up for Shanita Garza and her story, Dr. R. Okay. Good evening. Okay. So I served as a Peace Corps Kenya uh, a volunteer, Peace Public Health volunteer in Kenya. Um, from 2005 to 2007. So, yeah. So my <laughs> my first year in country, I just really wanted to like become a part of the community. You know, I wanted to as opposed to being an observer, you know, wanted to make friends, make connections, um, try to figure out what I could do, what 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 they could do with me, um, and just become a part of the community before I figured out what kind of plan I had to save the world, right? So the first year in country um, was going really well. Um, everything was going according to plan. The only thing was was that I was not having sex. That it wasn't like there wasn't penis available. There was plenty of penis available. I just made the conscious choice to not have sex with someone else. Uh, that's not to say that I wasn't enjoying um, sexual gratification. I masturbated a lot the first year in Kenya. No, I mean like, Morning, noon, evening, nighttime, dawn, dusk, twilight. <laughs> I was there, and I was a phenomenal lover. Like, seriously. <laughs> I was, I was. Uh, so much so that one morning I woke up, and I kind of felt like something may not be right, right? So I did the, you know, the flashlight with the mirror thing, and I'm looking down there, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should go to the doctor. <laughs> Right? So uh, the doctor's office is in Nairobi. Um, it's a two-day trip, but I've convinced myself at this point that I probably should go and see uh, the doctor. So I call the office, and Dr. R picks up the phone. And I'm like, hey, Dr. R, I, th I think I probably need to come in and see you. I think I might have an STD, right? <laughs> and she goes with the usual question. She's like, um, so you've been having sex? Yes. You know, um, how many partners? Just one. You know, did you use any protection? Nope. You know, how many times? Multiple. I can't even count, right? I could have told her that I was just masturbating, but I didn't want her to like invalidate my crazy and I needed to go and see her. So she's like, okay, come in at this time and we'll, and we'll see you there. So I find myself on the bus on my way to Nairobi, which is a two day trip. And I'm wondering how the hell did I get in this position? Like what happened in my life back home to while now I'm on this bus thinking that I might have given myself an STD. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, like, why did I leave my friends and family? Why did I quit my job? Why did I sell my car? And, and, and is this like poetic justice? I'm a public health volunteer. <laughs> Most of my conversations in my community centered around sex and what constituted a safe sex. I was a huge advocate of masturbation, right? There's no chance of pregnancy, you know, no chance of STD, maybe, and then there's, and no, and then there's like wiggle room for that whole, I was a virgin before I got married. You know what I'm saying? There's wiggle room for that if you masturbate, I feel. Um, and then maybe I think at some sort of subconscious level, I wanted to be punished because I was having like a lot of good sex with myself. And I was like, this, this can't be allowed. This can't be right. There must be something wrong. And like, this was the punishment for all that good sex I was having. So uh, I get to Nairobi, and um, I get into the office, and I'm, I, she's, Dr. R comes in. She's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, fine. And she's like, you know, get, get undressed, you know, and scooch down on the table. And she's down there, and I'm, you know, I'm telling her story, telling my story, and I'm like, you know, Dr. R, I've, I've just been masturbating, but I don't think I've had enough Purell, you know, on hand, and I don't <laughs> always have access to soap and water. And, and I'm telling her what's going on, and then she peeks, like, from behind the little thing, and... The look on her face let me know that I have fucked up. <laughs> no, really. And that I probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> but I was already there, I was undressed, and I was committed. 
and I needed answers. <laughs> and so she's, she's down there, she's prepping or whatnot, and, and she begins the exam, and she's like pulling and stretching and doing these things that I've never really experienced before during an exam. And normally, um, um, when you're having an exam, um, here's the vagina, right? And then you have this tool, and it's called a speculum, right? <laughs> Seriously, listen. <laughs> and the, the person who's administering the exam, they put uh, no lubricant on it, and they let you know that they're about to insert it. So it's like, okay, here we go, nice and easy. There we go, and it's in like that, and then they open you up, and it's all good, right? This was not Dr. R. It was definitely a, you shouldn't be here type of thing. And I felt that, right? <laughs> it, it was horrible. <laughs> And, and normally, also during the exam, you get um, a cotton swab. And so what the person who's administering does is that they want to collect um, samples. And so normally, it feels just like a little bit of a, of a tickle. You can barely feel it, even if at all. Um, again, this is not Dr. R with her cotton swab. It was definitely a swab, and a swab, and a swab and a swab to the point where I want to tell her there's nothing else for you to collect. There is no more data down there. There are no more sales. I am sellless. Whatever you need to know is on that cotton swab, right? So she, she leaves the room, and I'm sitting on a table, and then she comes back in a few minutes later, and, and she walks up, and she's like, you just have a yeast infection. <laughs> I know, ill, right? And, and she's like, you can continue masturbating. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yay. Like, you know, I'm patting myself on the back. Like, I've done good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been responsible and whatnot. And so she, she kind of takes a step back for a minute. And she does like this. And then she does like this. And then she does like this. And my heart dropped a little bit because I'm like, oh, shit. Like, it's not a yeast infection. It's not your running meal yeast infection. It's something else. And she goes, your vagina, it looked okay at first, but now it looks eroded. Yeah, right? <laughs> she said, and I go, I go, excuse me? And she's like, your vagina, it looked okay at first, but now it looks a little eroded. It's a eroded vagina. And I'm thinking like, what do you think happened between me walking through that door and sitting on this table to where my vagina looked okay at first, and now it looks like I've been having sex with somebody else all night long. What could have possibly happened in that time? But again, I'm vulnerable on the table, and she's giving me good news, and she sends me on my way. And once again, I find myself on the bus, wondering what has happened in my life, <laughs> to where I'm a public health volunteer and a female who couldn't discern that I had a yeast infection from an STD. <laughs> How did I wind up here? And I'm on my way to my friend Lexi's house. Her house was the place that you went to when you wanted to go for solace. I mean, she had electricity. You know, she had she she did she had a shower. It was cold. Um, she had a refrigerator, and she had like this huge stash of instant cheese grits, which I loved. So I'm going there for companionship and therapy and for grits. So uh, I get to her house, and as usual, there's like so many Peace Corps volunteers there. A lot of my uh, good girlfriends are there, and we're all sitting at the table, and we're waiting to uh, play her Game Boy. Lexi also had a Game Boy, and it had Tetris, the only game. But that was like the height of our entertainment, like playing that Tetris game. So we're at the table, and I'm like, y'all, like I just came back from Dr. R, and I had an exam, and like it was fucking brutal. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm still like recovering or whatever. And so then all of a sudden, everyone starts sharing their stories and their experiences with Dr. R. Like apparently she was just out there being merciless to everybody's vagina. You know, so I'm I'm feeling validated because I'm like, oh, it wasn't personal. Like she's done everybody like that. So everybody's sharing their story and you know and telling what happened. And I'm like, do y'all know what this heifer said? And they're like, what? And I'm like, do you know she told me I had an eroded vagina? And it was quiet for like a nanosecond. And then everybody started laughing. <laughs> like everybody started to laugh. And, and they were actually, I think, a little bit envious because they were like, oh, whoa, no, you can't be the only one with a vagina name. Like I want a name for my vagina too, <laughs> right? So, so Lexi's like, well, I'm gonna be surly vagina. So she was surly vagina. And then Rachel's like, well, I'm going to be unruly. I'm unruly vagina. And then Rachel's like, well, I'm going to be vexed. I'm vexed to vagina. 
So everybody gets a, a, a vagina name. <laughs> and so much so that, that Lexi's like, well, I'm going to erase your name. And she's like erasing my name. And she's like, you are no longer Shanita. You are eroded vagina. So every time I would text or call her, eroded vagina would pop up on her cell phone. <laughs> Right? And now, mind you, this happened 10 years ago, and to this day, I'm not sure like, what I would have preferred in that office. Like, I don't know if Dr. R would have said, like, Shanita, I think you've given yourself a trick. But your vagina is like the most beautifulest, wonderful, marvelous, like divinity vagina. I've ever seen, and like maybe a tear came down her cheek or something. I don't know. Like, do I want like a, a marvelous, wonderful vagina with trick or <laughs> an eroded vagina, but no STD? <laughs> so I, I don't know to this day. So uh, that's, that's what happened. I was a, 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 a public health volunteer female who did not know that she had a yeast infection as opposed to an STD. Um, and I had convinced myself so much because sometimes, and this is just, it's, it's, a, it's a question you might ask yourself, how did that exactly happen to someone like me? And the simple answer is that sometimes when you're in a foreign country and you don't have access to Google or a book for a doc where there are no doctors, sometimes you convince yourself that you've given yourself an STD for masturbation. Um, so <laughs> that happened, and as a result of that, I had a nickname, and it was eroded vagina. However, I feel like I should let you know that my vagina is fine now. <laughs> okay, vaginas are very resilient. My vagina has healed. I've asked people and everyone has assured me it does not look eroded anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually probably beautiful. All right.